my name is Walter and welcome back to Walter Originals for you and Originals for you. Uh, this is for Black Mirror Season 4 and uh, this is uh, the season recap or I, uh, as I want to kind of go more into is the season breakdown where I kind of break down the episodes for you and kind of rank it in a way that you guys will understand and I will obviously explain my decision and etc etc. Um, uh, but yeah, first of all, I want to say that the, uh, season four as a whole was pretty good, but, uh, because of a certain movie, uh, that came out this year, uh, it's called The Inner Circle and it was a really boring movie. It was so bland, uh, it's too long, but that concept in itself is very much a Black Mirror episode because... You know, it takes this concept of uh, voyeurism in this uh, movie uh, and, you know, plays off of the, you know, ethics and all of that. And it kind of even ends on a sort of like a, a Black Mirror note, like, you know, like, oh, like, what's going to happen next? And I really think that the inner circle either stole or borrowed the idea from a Black uh, Mirror episode and they were like, shit, somebody kind of stole it slash borrowed it now we can't do it for the season four because in the fifth episode the last episode uh it seems that that w that was what they were trying to do but they couldn't so they kind of had to do it in um anthological kind of way and don't get me wrong the fifth episode was really good uh but yeah i think that you know some of that was really kind of downplayed for because of the movie in itself um but yeah as a whole i thought that black mirror season four was really good i mean like it was pretty good but compared to season three i think it kind of faltered a bit like it tried to go like season four tried to go back to season one and it and season one in itself i think has its own stuff and it's it's just kind of detached from two three and, and four as well because like two, I I felt it was kind of going more towards the mythos and like the I mean the, you know, the sometime the dystopian like future and all of that coming into play. Uh, but season one was more you know methodical and you know uh very slow paced so that you you can get into it. Three, I just felt it was super immersive, like it just dives you in. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, for me, I, I would say that, um, it's still really good because like the first episode itself, it really lends itself to Rod Serling's work, um, you know, Twilight Zone. And I really thought that was something of an homage, like a really good homage of the Twilight Zone because I was just expecting, uh, to Rod Serling's voice in the middle of that, um, you in the middle of the intro to be like and now we're in the twilight zone Do -do -do -do. like like not only the first episode like the episode of metalhead as well and also kind of kind of the crocodile episode but the metalhead episode i really felt it i was like oh my god this is kind of something like Twilight Zone would do because it's the black and white as well and it's all done in black and white. I really appreciated that. I really like that. Um, so yeah, let's get into the episodes itself. Uh, not in any ranking order this time. It's just the episodes first, and then I would I would I would rank it later on to kind of give and give you more reason about that so we have the uss mcallister as first episode and that's kind of the you know the star trek kind of feel and i thought that this episode was pretty okay because pretty all right pretty okay this is okay <laughs> um so yeah uh it's it's more on uh you know the fantasy world slash the gaming uh, world as well and this guy you know he's kind of a loner he's kind of a you know he's kind of a <laughs> he's kind of like me like he's he's not really anyone important but also he kind of is really smart and, and he does what he does um and i thought it was a somewhat of a strong episode because you know you got the 
I, I thought it was Linda Cardinelli, um, Linda Cardellini, but it was Christine Milioti, and I was like, oh my god, the, like, Christine Milioti, the girl from Now I See Me Too that replaced Christine Milioti, and Linda Cardellini, like, they have some of, like, the same features, and I'm like, do they <laughs> share the same parents? I don't know, uh, but yeah, they are kind of very similar in that, but Christine Milioti, I think, you know, she brings the the you know ditzy fangirl kind of thing pretty well in this episode and i thought i thought that you know the the game was pretty interesting uh, in itself um i was i'm just kind of nitpicking some stuff now and it's just like how come he didn't like get, like put up firewall i know it's an update but like at least like you know protect himself from ever doing that like at least Give himself the op op option of like ejecting himself, and that's um, that's what I kind of thought he was gonna do, but like he couldn't. Not like, but you could have like modified it, like, cause like I'm pretty sure, you know, if you, if you like get to start being paranoid, I think you would have like kind of modified the game in itself to kind of say like, okay, like um, you know, I think it's time for us like. I mean, for me to kind of modify the game so that uh, the characters don't get too much of an idea of like escaping. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure he thought that the the other characters would wean her in, but uh, she's pretty optimistic and kind of is a go getter. So you know, that's just me though. Uh, and then we have this second episode, which I kind of didn't like because this is a, this is an episode which, which is really generic. Um, it's the, um, you know, it's the mother and her daughter and like, she wants to take care of her daughter but like, I can't really because like, you know, she's scared of losing her again like because you know, she did kind of lost track of her like, in the park, uh, couldn't find her until like a few minutes and then she's like, oh my god, oh my god, I don't want this to happen here and then she signs up for this, uh, program thingy like it's a um, surveillance company sort of uh, so that you can uh, monitor your child and kind of do the filter stuff it's like kind of like the internet the early internet we've got the parental controls you can censor porn you can censor violence whatever um, and that's a neat idea but uh, when you get this like kind of like uncomfortable feel for the mother i think like it's really really weird for me to see because i'm like well like why doesn't she list like other people because like there is the father like i mean like father of the mother like i mean you know just saying like the grandfather of the girl um like well you know you had the perfect person to help you out like i'm just like why didn't you ask him like what I don't I don't get it like you know I, I don't know what happened to the father uh, but yeah I mean the father of the the girl um, but yeah like there was no way for me to be like okay I'm on this person's side or this person's side at the end of it I'm obviously on the daughter's side because I'm like I think the mother really deserves it because I was like yeah you shouldn't do this to your child like I'm pretty sure like you would have like found out like I mean learned at least like by going and meeting other parents and saying like okay like how do you handle your own kids like you know give me some pointers like you know at least like if you see a couple on the street like go ahead like with the kid as well like say like okay like how do you like do it or like learn and like you know ask your kid questions like okay do you wanna do you want to know more about this? Whatever. Are you comfortable with this? But no, she is always doing this. And, you know, like, I mean, it's the technological era as well. So I'm like, why don't you put a tracker on her? Like, I'm, I'm just saying, like, you want to know where she is. You don't have to see where she is, but at least know where she is. I think that's good enough. Like, you know, like if you want to see the world through her eyes that is an invasion of privacy because i'm just like that is not a good 
that, that's not a good pattern because like okay you can you can control what she sees but eventually she's gonna see it no matter what so I definitely think she should learn about the the, the world and she sh as a parent you should be able to explain uh, the world to your kid to say like okay the world is not all rainbows and sunshines because there's gonna be rain there's gonna be snow it's gonna be fucking hail right there is it's not all black and white there's yellow there's purple there's everything and it that makes the world a big place uh, a place where you have to learn that sometimes you gotta lie sometimes you you gotta you gotta stand up for yourself. Sometimes you gotta get into a fight. Sometimes you gotta you gotta stand up for what you believe in. Sometimes you gotta protest. Sometimes you gotta vote. Sometimes you you have to do things that you don't wanna do because this is a world where you cannot just idle by. Like you know, I'm just saying. Um, but also there is something to be said about the Carter argument where it's like, oh, well, no, she's a single mother, and, uh, you know, I guess she's within all her rights to be paranoid. I mean, like, no, because she has help. Again, like, that Carter argument is collapsible because the, the dad, I mean, the grandfather, is there and could be a guidance for her and he was kind of just there for nothing and I'm like then why was he introduced like if you want to do a single parent you can you don't need to bring in the grandfather because then your argument falters because of that in itself like I don't know maybe it's just me but I really didn't understand why the the father of the mother was there I don't know I don't, I don't remember the names because this really was a forgettable episode for me I I just liked some of the stuff which was in there because it was like yeah the it's something to do with like the NSA and the government watching you whatever the drone stuff again um, and uh, yeah, I'm like, why, why are you not wanting to live your life and wanting to live the life of your daughter? Like, that's a bit mental. Like, I'm just saying, like, that's super crazy for a parent to do that because I'm just like, that's really sketchy and you can't really do that because that is super, super an invasion of privacy. I'm just like, you cannot control your your kids' lives like this. You cannot manipulate everything. You cannot keep them in a controlled box and say, no, you can't get out of the box because this is the box. This is the world. And it's not the world. And it's so much more than the world. And I think that's why Netflix kind of is starting to falter. And as I've, wa as I've binge watched uh, the this Netflix series, I'm starting to see that Netflix is kind of getting an ego about itself because like I've seen it in Big Mouth, I've seen it in this now and I'm like, are they required to name check Netflix? I've seen it in Bright as well, I'm like, something to do with Netflix's ego, whether it be because more people are kind of subscribing to their, their stuff or whatever, they're starting to have an ego. Um, but that's just my argument for the second episode not being as strong as the first episode. And take note that the first episode wasn't really super strong as well. I, if I had have to rate the first episode, and it's not, this isn't really a rank, it's just a rating. The first episode, I would actually just give it a 7 on basis because it's, it's a good introduction to season 4 again. It's, it's a good way to bring us back, uh, but the second episode, I'd give it a 5 or a 4. It's really just like, kind of, it went downhill, I don't know why it's so much of a sudden. Uh, third episode, 
Crocodile was much better. I, I thought um, the idea of the I I mean okay the rave at the start that was really like out of something like we don't really know why they left that in there. I th I think they forgot to edit it out or something, or maybe they came back from a rave or something like that and it, it still played on the radio. Maybe that's that's what they're going going for anyway. It's the like jarring juxtaposition, whatever, fine. Uh, I really thought that the um, the length that the the woman went through to kind of bury her past was really kind of like interesting, and I'm like, okay, this is this is somewhat cool. And obviously, the the insurance lady was lying through her teeth because uh, when she was asking the dentist, like. Uh, you know, uh, the dentist asked her, like, are you gonna show this to anyone else? And she's like, well, only if you are, um, you know, only if you're hurting someone or doing the crime yourself. You're not, are you? And I was like, no. Um, and then when uh, the main character asks her, like, are you gonna show anyone? And she's like, no. And like the main character rightfully calls her out, she's like, nah, you're fucking lying, and kills her. Um, yeah, the only ethical dilemma in this really is the baby one. I, th I think she should have just maybe kind of just like, I don't know, do, I mean, yeah, she had, to, uh, she had to kill the baby, but the hamster was still kept alive, and I'm like, why didn't you go all out again? Like. Like, did you just not have enough time? Maybe she didn't see the, the, um, see the hamster there, whatever. That's fine. Um, the fourth episode was, uh, Hang the DJ. It was, it was the, Hang the DJ was really, really good. And compared to San Junipero, and I'm going to get a really lot of flack for this, but compared to San Junipero, I thought that Hang the DJ was just, so much better done like it's still the same star cross lover steam that black mirror kind of has and it does play to the romantic in in me because you know i'm just like yeah i i kind of believe in this thing too like if you are meant for somebody you are really meant for somebody and like you feel that undeniable connection and you just to uh, just have to accept it and go into it uh, and that's so much better done here than in the San, Uni San Junipero. Because in San Junipero, <clears throat> the problem for me was that um, she did, like, one of the characters did something unforgivable for me. And I'm like, then why did you even go into it? Like, I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, it doesn't really carry the the emotion anymore because you just gone and ruined it and I'm like that really brought it down for me but yeah it was really well done I thought that it was really smart and where it was gonna go and uh, I like that you know it's like a simulation but they don't know it's a simulation uh, and also it's kind of like testing their willpower and everything so I really I really like that um, the next episode is um, Metalhead. Uh, Metalhead was really good as well. As I said in the start, it was like really to the T to a, a, a Twilight Zone episode with the black and white, from the black and white and all that. And the shots were really good. Uh, but the only problem for me in this one was the ending. And I was really like, well, shit. Like, I mean, I understand why she had to do it because, you know, in the end she did get the shrapnel and the robot did cut her leg again and she kind of knew she couldn't survive anymore. Uh, but then again, like, I'm just like, well, you know, you should have forced, like, I mean, like, you should have checked for, like, food supplies, whatever. And I just let the fucking robot dog kill you. Like, I mean, like, just accept that the robot dog killed you and then that's it you didn't need to kill yourself i'm just like well then like there was no real reason for the for this episode then uh but yeah i, I really uh, like the idea of the robo dog i'm like yes this is really cool um and it's a good way to deter um 
uh, you know, robbers and whatever. And of course, the ethical dilemma in here is that did they go too far because they were just stealing fucking teddy bears? And for me, I thought that that was kind of a that was kind of a stupid giveaway. I mean, like, it's just like I would have liked it better if that was um, left on a cliffhanger instead of the crocodile one in which it was left on a cliffhanger. I was like, what? 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 What happened? Like, did you get caught? Like, I, I mean, it would have been better if we would see the close up. But also, it's good that they let us interpret that ending. Uh, but this one, I think they should have done the same thing, but they didn't, and I was really kind of disturbed a bit because I was like, well, I feel like the stronger argument would have been the food, and then we would be more on uh, their side. But of course, this is for the betterment of like kind of arguing against the technology and whatever. And I did they go too far, maybe. And of course it does, but it does give that strong argument. But I'm just like, really? Like she wanted to take the bears? Like we don't know her backstory. We don't know who she is. We don't know why she's stealing it. We only know that she kind of has a kid. I'm not really sure myself because we are not really informed. She says only like, oh, okay, but tell Graham I love him. It can mean that she's talking to her friend and saying, to to tell her husband that she loves him or tell her husband that the, she loves her kid like there's two possible options and that you know that's just disturbing for me personally um, and the last episode is Black Museum which is an anthology episode with kind of like two three anthologies and there is not a lot uh, the first one, the first anthology is about the, um, uh, a doctor who is kind of having a bad reputation because he, he lost quite a lot of number, a number of uh, patients due to he, him not being able to save them. So he kind of get on, get on board with this um, science experiment that kind of lets him feel uh, people's pain and kind of treats it properly until one day of course where he doesn't know the symptoms but I'm just like well you are a doctor like I'm sure you kind of read some theory about poisoning at least I, I don't care if it's a Russian poison because poison is poison chemistry is chemistry you can't really run from chemistry because it's either uh, absinthe or like I mean like arsenic whatever Poison is poison, like, even though it's Russian, it's fucking, like, crypto poison, whatever, you can't change the chemistry of a poison, and I think that kind of brought it down for me as a science student, but also I kind of understand that, you know, you don't know the feeling of poison because you've never been poisoned, but I feel like he should have kind of just relied on his... Uh, doctoral knowledge but yeah this is when he kind of feels death and you know he, he doesn't really die obviously and then you know he becomes addicted to wanting to see the fear on people and when they die or something like that and then you know it goes on and on until he himself gets caught and put be put under a coma for a thousand years or something like that forever uh, there. Uh, the next one is a mother who gets into a coma and uh, cannot, you know, come out and then she accept. like, I mean, the, the husband accepts that, uh, you know, transfer the consciousness into his head, but he kind of doesn't want it anymore after a while, obviously, because there's so many things going on and of course, you know, you're starting to to start to want to move on from the person because you don't know whether she's coming back or not and then um, you know put into the the, the bear uh, and the bear is obviously given to the sun but the sun doesn't really want it anymore because you know they grow up and everything and of course she's been left there for a long time and that's the second anthology and the third anthology and the one tying the whole episode together which I thought was really poorly done because I'm just like well then you know 
I I get the argument. Like it's just like okay, like play, play others want to kind of be heard, whatever. Uh, and it's just done that way because it's Black Mirror. Um, and so yeah, it's it's more on this guy who got wrongly convicted. Maybe not. We will never know. Because they are so convinced that he is he was guilty, but he was convinced that he's not. Um, but yeah, whatever it is, and of course the main guy, um, he was like Ray, was really kind of biased in itself. So you know he gave to the conscious to his museum, whatever, and then you know got to torture him with the the electric chair or whatever and like tourists came in uh, but plot twist the girl is actually the daughter of the guy in there and uh, she transfers the consciousness of the Ray guy because you know she poisoned him and uh, he put, uh, she puts him in the consciousness of her dad and then she pulls the switch and then uh, he gets tortured as well and then you know she gets this little souvenir that is programmed to see uh, him being tortured as well. So and there you go, there you have it. And also double pl plot twist is that uh, sh she has her mom in her mind. So there you go. Um, I thought that was really well done, by the way, because uh, they showed um, the mother coming up there, and you, you're you not really sure whether the mom came before. Like, they did mention the mom come before, but also they kind of, like, blurred the line, because, like, I, I was thinking as well, like, oh, maybe the mom is also in her mind, because, like, she put the hand there as well. So, anyway, uh, time to um, rank, and I'm so sorry that it's gone to 30 minutes, but I'm going to try to edit down my thoughts and all that so uh number one spot is um okay this episode was really good because i i still really feel that is more well done and for those who's, who's going to attack me because of san unibero i honestly don't care it's hang the dj I, I love it. It's the best episode in my opinion, and I and I really can't forget about that episode in itself because I I get it. They fought for a while. And that was a flaw in itself, but you know what? It makes sense. You know the guy is insecure. He's 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 not sure why this girl is so perfect for him, and thus he wants to try and see how long he he can last, but. You know, he fucks up and he admits he fucks up. And, you know, but it just shows that they are meant to be for for ever together at the end. And I, I thought it was really well done. Second uh, place is um, Crocodile. I thought that was really well done as well. Because um, the in itself, is is very, you know, paced well. And, you know, you have the pizza van delivery accident going on that kind of ties in together with the story and i thought that was kind of cool to get two storylines together but also i'm just wondering what happened to the to the pizza guy then like who got knocked down like did, did his case like never been will never be solved or what like that's just that's just me though uh number three spot is uh, Black Museum. Uh, yeah, I just talked about this. I I, I still think is is quite good. It reminded me of the uh, White Rabbit one. Um, no, sorry, White Christmas one where uh, you know it's just more of the talking, and it's really reminiscent of that. And this is actually the first episode which kind of provides some continuity because uh, in one box there is the Archangel iPad thing and uh, crystal glass. Um, number four is uh, Metalhead. Uh, Metalhead is uh, still pretty okay. Uh, I, re I really enjoyed the um, uh, homage to uh, the Twilight Zone black and white style. Uh, I just didn't really like the ending. So 
That's why it's number four. Number five, uh, USS McAllister. This is number five only for one reason. It, it, it was kind of slow, and I know it was trying to build an atmosphere. Uh, I, I just thought that he should have been more smart and that he should have been more skeptical and how the game is, is gaining more consciousness about itself. Maybe he could have tweaked it to kind of be less about the fucking AI getting more ideas and whatever not. Uh, but that's just me. And of course the last uh, on my list is Archangel. Again, I, did, I didn't really like this one. I didn't. I didn't think it was necessary to to do the overprojection thing again. Um, it was just really really bland. And by the end of it, I was actually cheering for the the kid. I'm like, yeah, because this is what happens when you constrict your kids too much. They are obviously going to be really really angry about it, and you wanting to gain that relationship back you will never gain that relationship back because you broke their trust um and that's about it guys i'm so sorry again i will try to limit it down um to 20 minutes if i can if i can't i'm so sorry about that but if you do like this type of videos where i trying to really break it down for you guys and really talk about it please leave a like if you'd like to see more please subscribe to me and remember to ring the bell so that you are still subscribed to me because youtube loves to unsubscribe people nowadays and remember to share my videos and share the love and put me up there with the big guys if you can uh so thank you guys so much and i will see you guys in the next video Thank you.